morning, Glory America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. It's Hugh Hewitt on this July 2nd, 2020. I hope you're watching on our YouTube channel. I hope you're listening on any of our affiliates across this great nation and this great uh, continent and across the world, in fact, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in Hugh Hewitt, and you can do that. Or you can just stay listening where you are. It's the, uh, the eve of the long weekend. We're taking tomorrow off to begin to prepare to celebrate on July 4th. We get fireworks in Washington, D.C. There will not be the annual big gathering on the mall, but there will still be fireworks. Many of you don't get fireworks this year, but you will still be able to celebrate being in the greatest country that my friend Michael Medved used to always say at the close of every show on God's green earth. I'd like to add ever uh, the greatest, freest country ever. So no matter what our differences are, no matter how divided we are, and we are pretty divided in 2020, and we are in the midst of a pandemic, which is dangerous, deadly often, we are still the greatest country in the history of the, of the planet, and we celebrate that this weekend. We also have to say goodbye to CHOP West Coast, even as we say hello to CHOP East Coast. The Seattle police dismantled CHOP in Seattle yesterday. Uh, the police chief just could not believe what she found there. She, you should read the, I posted her quotes on Twitter. She was astonished at the degradation, the amount of destruction, the property damage. The residents of the neighborhood came out and thanked the police for freeing them. Meanwhile, uh, Chop East has taken over the area near City Hall in New York. This is your future if Democrats win in the fall. Your city, unless it's a nice small town like Warren, Ohio, is going to have a chop. If you're living in Chicago, you're going to have a chop. No matter where you are, they will have chop violence. Meanwhile, violence is soaring in New York, in Chicago, in major cities across the United States where the police have pulled back. Rather than get involved in this, rather than be assailed by uh, demonstrators and bottles and abuse in the print and electronic media, they just pulled back. And violence has gone off the charts because that's the way the Democrats wanted it. Just understand the choice this falls between ordered liberty and chaos. It's also abroad between appeasement of China and standing up to China. President Trump yesterday denounced the Russian bounty story as a hoax. And I'll get to his, uh, he had lots of comments. Mike Pompeo had a lot of comments. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien had a lot of comments. I'm going to do all of that. There's a fascinating poll from Zogby Analytics. I can hardly believe this. 55% of Americans polled by Zogby believe that Joe Biden is in the early stages of dementia. 60% of younger voters think so. Can you believe that? 55% of Americans believe that Joe Biden has dementia. 60% of young voters do. Wow. But I want to begin this morning, because we're celebrating freedom this weekend, with the Wall Street Journal editorial, the lead editorial on Hong Kong. It's simply titled, the meaning of Hong Kong. China's decision to impose its national security law on Hong Kong is a seismic event that goes well beyond the sad fate of Hong Kong's 7.5 million people. The illegal takeover shows that Beijing's communist rulers are willing to violate their international commitments with impunity as they spread their authoritarian model. We say this with regret because we were among those who hoped amid China's reform era that began in the 1980s that the Middle Kingdom could be drawn into the world of peaceful global norms. Hong Kong, a showcase of that prosperity that economic freedom and the rule of law can produce, was a lesson for Beijing to learn from. Now these hopes are crushed, as China's communist legislature imposed the national security law that ends Hong Kong's one country, two systems governance and subverts the rights promised under the Sino-British Joint Declaration of 1984. Beijing promised to preserve Hong Kong's legal autonomy and freedom of speech, assembly, the press, and other liberties. The 7.5 million in Hong Kong now subject to this sweeping legislation weren't even permitted to read the text until it passed. In a statement Tuesday, Hong Kong's chief executive, in essence her mini-dictator, uh, Xi Jinping's mini-me, Carrie Lam, claim that the national security law only targets an extremely small minority of offenders while the life and property as well as the various legitimate basic rights and freedoms enjoyed by the overwhelming majority of citizens will be protected. The Hong Kong people clearly don't believe her because thousands took to the streets Wednesday to protest, despite the personal risks under the new law. 
More than 300 were arrested, including several under the new security law. The legislation outlaws secessionism, subversion, terrorist activities, and collusion with foreign forces, all defined so broadly that nearly anything but unconditional obedience to Beijing may be deemed illegal. It also forbids provoking by unlawful means hatred among Hong Kong residents towards the central people's government or the government of the region, which is likely to cause serious consequences. The maximum punishment is life in prison. The obvious targets include prominent figures like democracy advocates Martin Lee, Joshua Wong, Nathan Law, and publisher Jimmy Lai. Jimmy Lai has been a guest on this show. But Beijing also makes clear that anyone who participates in protests or otherwise speaks out against the Communist Party could face charges. A Hong Konger who advocates for democracy continues the Wall Street Journal editorial at a U.S. university or meets with a member of Congress runs the risk of arrest upon return. The law allows authorities to go after foreigners, including for, including for speech or activities that take place outside Hong Kong. I ain't going back. Journalists, human rights activists, businessmen now visit or work in the city at their peril. I repeat what the journal warns you. Journalists, human rights activists, and businessmen now visit or work in the city at their peril. The law doesn't explicitly say if the accused can be extradited to the mainland, but that is meaningless since the measure effectively brings mainland justice to Hong Kong. Security forces who answer to Beijing will collect intelligence and surveil suspects. Beijing chooses which judges can hear national security cases, claims exclusive authority to interpret the new law. All of this is ominous for Taiwan whose free people will be even less likely to trust Beijing's assurances after watching Hong Kong's fate. Taiwan's foreign minister condemned the new security law, and some of Hong Kong's people may seek refuge on the island. A Beijing mouthpiece warned about, about a Chinese, uh, excuse me, Beijing mouthpiece warned about a Taiwanese black hand in Hong Kong affairs, and a Chinese military intervention cannot be ruled out. I've been warning you about that, friends. Come August, they're running some, um, exercises that CCP is with the People's Liberation Army Navy on empty islands which belong to Taiwan. Watch that space. The British, to their credit, have responded to all of this by offering some three million Hong Kongers the right to reside in the UK on a path to citizenship. The US should do the same, and bipartisan bills in Congress are moving to offer refugee status to some Hong Kongers. President Trump should welcome these talented freedom lovers with open arms and what promises to be a long competition between democracy and Chinese communism. For now, however, a beacon of freedom has been extinguished and the world should learn that it cannot trust Beijing's promises. That is the bottom line. And the Wall Street Journal, bravo for a great editorial. We should mourn the loss of freedom there. Let me do a market report if I can, brought to you by Birch Gold. Hughgold.com or text my name, Q, to 47, 47, 47. Do you realize that the Fed is about to spend $10 trillion to soften the impact of coronavirus? You know what that does to the value of paper money? It has, it has, it has had amazing effects on the market. Gold at this morning is at 1784, dollars uh, $1,784 per ounce. You tell me what that means. That means people do not trust that inflation will remain at zero. They think inflation's coming back. Amazon, which is the stock market's counterpart to gold, went up $120 yesterday, or $119.88. I told you that was going to happen. Gold and Amazon are reserve currencies as the dollar becomes increasingly fungible with the printing press at the Federal Reserve. So diversify, diversify, diversify. Birch Gold is available at hughgold.com or by texting my name to 474747, Hugh. Make sure you transfer a portion of eligible IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA that Birch Gold will maintain for you. You can do that today by going to hughgold.com or texting my name, Hugh, to 474747. I'm coming right back, America. Stay tuned. 